Good morning, everyone. You'll have to excuse my very hoarse voice, but I'll try my best to be calm and soothing because it's, all, it's also about peace. So my voice will suit when I I'm going to speak about conflict. Um, <laughs> thank you, Birin. I'm sure all of you know what this is. It's the language of ones and zeros. It's the binary code. It's the code that the computers understand, a language that computers understand. But I think it'll be not proper if I stop at this. It's actually the language that you and me communicate in. All the platforms that we're constantly using, these are the symbols that keep us connected. If I was to speak on this subject, let's say five years back or four years back, I would have said 60% of our time we are spending with these numbers. But today I can say 100% of our time we are spending with these numbers, where these numbers or this language is connecting, to, connecting each one of us all the time, even when we are sleeping and we have the Fitbit or the monitoring uh, instruments on our hands, it's constantly monitoring how you're sleeping and perhaps analyzing what your dreams and God knows where the information is all going. Now having said this, Though this is the language of communication, the language of platformization, the language in which we communicate messages of love and peace and do business in, it's the same language, it is the same tiny bits of zeros and ones that is the language of mass destruction. This is the language that can topple governments, this is the language that can cause destruction to property and also to life. And I'm not talking of science fiction. I'm going to give you a few examples that will put this subject in perspective as to how cyber conflict or cyber war is not something of the future, but it is something that is happening today. And even today on our own computers where we participate and, and in, with our small gadgets as a, in parts of cyber espionage. <coughs> About 15 years back, or to, be, to, to put it right in perspective, in the year 2007, the world saw the first cyber attack, a full-fledged cyber attack where an entire country was brought down by these ones and zeros. It happened in a very small country called Estonia, a small country which is at the south of Scandinavian countries sharing a border with Russia. Estonia was under Russian occupation for several years. Eventually, Russians decided to leave and Estonians got back their democracy. However, before the Russians left, they put a statue right in the middle of the city center of the city Tallinn, just to show a mark that, you know, we existed here. After a few years, Estonia thought it's time to reclaim the entire democracy and just remove all traces of Russians that were there, there, that were there in Estonia. So dis they decided to move the statue from the city center to one corner of the city. I don't know about the other foreign delegates who are here, what happens in your countries, but let's not go far off. Even in Pune, if we decide to shift a statue from one place to another, the entire city comes to a standstill. Estonia was no different, Tallinn was no different. In fact, the Russians decided that perhaps Tal Estonia is getting too big for their shoes. They're thinking they're really democratic when Russia is right next to them. So Russians, proclaimed a full-fledged cyber attack on the country, where the country came to an ultimate standstill. Now, how is that possible? It's very easy. To come to think of it, there's ones and zeros, and millions of lines of code that, is get, that gets written in ones and zeros have the capacity to paralyze all critical information infrastructure of a country. Now, what does CII mean? All the systems that make our, that makes our country run, communication grids, transportation system, medical facilities, dams, electricity grids, all of them were targeted and most importantly, the financial systems. The, in fact, the attack started with the banks in Estonia going down. 
one after the other customers started complaining that they cannot access banking systems now this is something that we really need to be alert about because now we are even in india we are talking of digital payments so it is it could be so easy for a country to completely cripple a, another country by a cyber attack what as happened in estonia this is typically called the denial of service attack then another thing happened that was really not very far off that was that happened in 2010 this is a nuclear power plant in iran it is said that the israelis attacked the iranian nuclear power plant the nand tax it was also it's also said nobody really claimed credit for it that it was a completely us sponsored attack what happened was this nuclear nuclear power plant got infected with a worm called stuxnet the stuxnet had this amazing capability of doing a very covert operation the operation was that the malware went inside the system that is the iranian nuclear power plant and just remained there for one year nobody noticed that the systems were compromised once the infection began stuxnet slowly started attacking the industrial control systems or the scada systems to such a small degree that again the attack went unnoticed slowly it started eating into the system how was it discovered almost after a year when strange things started happening to the computers within the nuclear power plant suddenly computers were rebooting certain disks and drives were not getting access so that got reported as a very low risk it got reported for a cyber audit as a very low risk that some computers are not working and a full fledged audit revealed that if this if these machines were not rebooting all the time in 2010 we were we were we would have witnessed a complete nuclear holocaust because the centrifugal systems inside the nuclear power plant had stopped functioning and they would have exploded at any point of time as i said this is not science fiction i'm not talking of something which happened many many years back or perhaps may not happen again it's it's right at our doorsteps not only are we going to talk of nation state actors who will proclaim an attack over another country but let's look at the sony hack what happened in this in terms of cyber espionage is that significant ip of significant value intellectual property of significant value got out in the public domain an entire corporation came down sony was a household name a few years back today i am a little skeptical about buying a sony product because they could not protect the intellectual property not only this another country proclaimed that their cyber capabilities of an attack were much larger than perhaps what the biggest superpower in the our country in our world thought that is the united states just because just pre release a film on their premium the north koreans decided that they will hack into a company again that also raised a big red flag in the entire world as to what can happen we okay, have another 4 minutes left 3 minutes one more very startling fact what dr girish kune mentioned this is the project that my club does kandhi bhavan protection of children from online sexual exploitation something that we may feel oh it's not connected with us but let me tell you research has proven there is data that people come to places like india cambodia thailand for sex tourism i had a opportunity of working with the national crime agency uk when they told us that they maintain a list of child sex offenders either who are convicted or still undergoing some some kind of a uh, of a trial and even if they are not convicted or completely acquitted the name is maintained in the database 
can they stop their transit from one country to another? No, because human right laws will not allow that. It will amount to a human right violation. So what do they do? Especially the UK, because I have direct knowledge about what they do. They will inform our authorities that our child sex, a child sex offender who's registered in the United Kingdom is traveling to your country. You keep an eye on him, because once a child sex offender is always a child sex offender. How do they reach out to our children? Through the net. Vulnerable targets who are our children from the age group of 5 to 16 to 18 to 25 are vulnerable targets for these people on the net. This is also something that is eating into our system. Now, this is the face of what cyber conflict is. And nobody knows where it is going because the problem is attribution. Who do you attribute an attack to? So either there are nation state actors, there could be hacktivists, there could be terrorists who are Islamic or non-Islamic terrorists, or there could be just one person sitting in his house just doing that for the heck of it. Or one individual who can, there, can no be, no be, there cannot be any attribution to. Or it could also be a country with a full capability of a cyber attack but who can conveniently put the attack onto some other country or to another organization because of the attribution issue. So what are the international strategies for cyber warfare? The United Nations ex-president Barack Obama very rightly said that their posture is very aggressive. Today they are fully equipped with a cyber offensive arsenal. The arms for cyber weapons is already on. India is lagging behind, way, way behind. China, France, Russia, Israel, America, both have full capabilities of a full-fledged cyber attack. Rightfully so, because they say, it is my duty, it is my duty to protect my country, even if the attack comes through cyber. So it's the fifth domain of warfare. Typical weapons of cyber attacks, sophisticated malicious code, I told you about the zeros and ones, the Stuxnet. There was another variant of Stuxnet called the Duku 2.0. Zero day exploits. Let me just spend two seconds on what zero day exploits are, because you and me contribute to them. If all of you have smartphones and unprotected smartphones, let me tell you each one of is contributing to the cyber attack because each of our compromised devices are called botnets or zombies who get compromised and they act as jump servers. So your network is getting used to jump from one node to another to perpetrate an attack. Okay, now I wish I had a lot to say about peace but cyber conflict itself is very new. Today, in the cyber world, people are talking of first gaining a, a very aggressive posture in terms of cyber conflict. And then countries will talk about peace because first you want to be armed. First you want to protect yourself. However, as I said, unfortunately, India does not have a cyber aggressive posture. In India, cyber attacks are not tier one attacks. Tier 1 threats have been identified, cyber attacks have been identified as tier 1 threats in all the other developed countries. But some conventions people are still trying. What we are doing in India is we have sectoral certs or the computer emergency response teams who talk to the other certs in other countries and there is mutual collaboration because attacks can just come from anywhere. So there is an understanding or an international understanding that threat vectors or threat intelligence has to be shared across borders. Only, of course, the, the, the option is when you don't want to disclose that because it's, as of now, completely voluntary. There was a convention on cybercrime of the Council of Europe. Uh, it didn't really go a long way, but there are some uh, countries who have participated in it. There is the Budapest Convention. India is not a signatory to the Budapest Convention because Europe and America wants us to share all the intelligence. However, we are looking for a mutual understanding where 
we would also want a similar cooperation because all most of our data is on foreign servers. That's not happening till now. We also have the International Telecommunications Union who plays a very large role in standardization of communication protocols because the moment communication protocols get standardized across the countries, it is only then we will have some control over the attacks which does not know any geographical boundaries. We have complete zero tolerance to child pornography. This is one place where all the countries talk in one language. All the countries say complete zero tolerance to child pornography. So if you see any child pornography image, there is this Internet Watch Foundation, it's a US-based organization, where you can just click a button and report an image. It could be anonymous reporting or it could also be named reporting. So this is something that we definitely are trying to work towards and at least make, a, make India a safe place for, against, for our children against child sex offenders. As far as the other peace treaties go, I wish that we as Rotary, as an organization, come forward and come up with initiatives that will garner this support in international peace agreements, especially in the cyberspace, because the next war definitely is going to be in cyber. Thank you. Thank you so much, Vaishali. I think you really took us to the 25th century wars, what probably would be maybe after five or 10 years down the line. And I think the young generation here from MIT would definitely appreciate that what Rotarians are doing for the future for the 25th century. Thank you so much. <laughs>